So uh, just cutting off the rear uh, leaf spring supports. Um, my favorite tool, of course, angle grinder with a cutoff disc. Uh, works just a treat. You can take your time, and then I just I made a nice uh, angular or right angle cut there, and cut along in here. I'm going to grind down the inside metal here. I'm going to grind down that inside metal so that I have so that I can build a channel that slides right into that that replicates the old one. There you go. Uh, you know this this inside metal that's left over. It's actually easier to get off with a seam splitting tool. You know that and a BFH banging on the back of it. Uh, seems to cut it back quite nicely and then I can clean it up with the grinder. Um, so I couldn't find channel iron that would fit into here so I'm going to uh, do it from two pieces of angle iron. I also found this is a bit thicker an eighth of an inch. Um, it's not quite 3 sixteenths though so I'm going to do it with 3 sixteenths. So what I'm doing right now is I've cut down this angle iron a little bit and then I'm just going to um, mark this other guy so that they fit in there nicely. Uh, then I will uh, clamp them up and tack weld it all together uh, so it's all nice and flat. Actually, I'll just probably just do it. Um, yeah. And then uh, we'll go on to our next step. Alright, um, well I've got uh, this piece on and I uh, put a little curve in there and mounted up the the old suspension mount. I just cleaned that, the old leaf spring mount. Um, um, and where, where it attached I did a flat straight weld here but then I put the fish plate over top to help to distribute any kind of load or pressure there. So proper kind of frame weld. So, not the prettiest welds in the world, but I'm pretty happy with it. Good penetration is all that matters. Uh, so, I'm uh, pretty close to finished all of the stripping of the frame on this side. And then I'll flip it over and finish the other side. Um, and then, once I got that happening, then I'll get it inside, get it warmed up, uh, do a clean and a paint on it. I just wanted to go over the tools that I've been using to uh, work on this. Um, number one, I don't know why it's not in the first spot. But, uh, number one is the a needle scaler. Um, if you've got a good compressor with lots of air, uh, this thing is great. It works very well for loose rust and you know flaky kind of stuff like that. And it also works extremely well if it's cold outside and you've got undercoating. Uh, you know, it's about, uh, right now I think it's dropping now, it's probably about six degrees, four degrees Celsius. I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit, you guys have to figure that out. Um, it ain't icy yet, but um, when it's cold like that, the undercoating, just this thing just flakes it right off, it's beautiful. And I don't have any gummy work to do afterwards. Um, however, there still has been some places where I've gotten into a lot of road grind that has built up over its nearly 60 years and um, and and over top of that uh, undercoating and so that's taken a little bit more of if I use a torch and a scraper uh, that helps a lot and maybe also toss in there some oven cleaner yeah so once that once that scaly crappy stuff is off whether it be undercoating or heavy scale rust um, grease and grime once that's off then it's time to get in there and work in with the angle grinder and uh, use uh, a couple of tools here that I like to use um, I am not doing concours here um, so I'm just using a 40 grit disc I don't dig in hard I just use a 40 grit disc and I just get off most of the rust if you look closely at the frame there's still rust kicking around on there I don't really care I'm using an encapsulator Right, so I just want to get off the majority of it. Sure, some of it's, lots of it's down to metal, but um, so the 40 grit disc uh, works well. I found out I just buy these as cheap as I can. The good ones wear out and get gummed up just as fast as the cheap ones. So buy the cheap ones by the, you know, 10 packs kind of thing. 
Um, to get in corners, I like the uh, braided wire wheel for sure, um, both in a cup design and a regular one. And these kind of get into corners, which is good. And then uh, there's always places where you can't get. So it's just getting to ever more smaller and smaller wire brushes. And it's going to leave, there's going to be rust left behind, right? So when I get into doing this, I haven't done these yet, but when I get into doing these, there's going to be rust left behind, but that's okay. Um, you know, either your rust converter or rust encapsulator will take care of that stuff. Yeah, so that's what I use. And uh, there it is, coming along quite nicely. Uh, here's Jerry with the needle scaler. First he does the needle stealer and then he does the stainless. Well what we have here is the internal frame cleaner 2000. I got an old toilet drain cleaner thing. Um, a pipe that I had sitting around for a while and I got a chain on the end of this. So I'm going to shove that into the frame and see what kind of trouble I get into. Um, I made another tool for cleaning the inside of the frame. I took a um, uh, whatever a chimney sweep brush, um, a plastic one, a polycarbonate one or something like that. Anyways, and I squared it off to just about the dimensions of the frame, maybe just a bit taller, not much. And I was able to I was able to get pretty close. I was able to put her in and probably get her definitely down to this corner. So the middle section I couldn't get clean. And so I still want to figure something else for, for that. I'm getting anal about the inside of the frame. I don't know what's going on. Well, there it is. I got all the frame all done. It's, um, it's not all down to bare steel, but a lot of it is. So I lifted the uh, frame up in the air and I uh, just blew it out through all the holes uh, using compressed air to get all the last little bits out and now it uh, is going to be brought inside and ready for painting. Well here's the stuff I'm going to use. Um, I chose not to use Pour 15. Don't know why. I guess I got sucked into the Eastwood propaganda. I don't know. But anyways, uh, uh, I've got Encapsulator Plus and then that internal frame coating and uh, that should uh, do it. So here's my little temporary spray booth uh, down in the shop. Um, I've got this plastic hanging suspended from the ceiling and it can roll up and down. And then I got a exhaust fan over there. Ultimately the plastic will go along this side and then there's plastic up here already. So it'll, um, so one is to keep the fumes out of the rest of the place, which is a good thing. And then number two is, is that when I get to actually spraying body parts, I'm not going to get paint all over the bloody place, you know, and also I can keep the dust really down to a minimum. Um, well, there it all is painted with the frame paint. Um, it came out okay. Uh, in hindsight, a better thing would have been if I sprayed it. Um, you know, putting stuff on with brushes. Um, you know, it's a brush paint job. There it is. Uh, frame ready for... Um, it's parts.